What's up, Empowered Christians? Pastor Brian of Empowered Christian Ministries back again to continue with our Bible study. So we pick back up where we left off on chapter 1, subsection B. So if you haven't already, uh, I recommend that you get the book, The Empowered Christian Roadmap. And there's links below and also down here. And if you're not already, I also recommend that you be part of a small group Bible study. And we have links to that here as well. This way, even if you just get one or two friends and, and come together or family members, and that way you have people in fellowship with that you're learning and growing with in your discipleship. So if you haven't already, I recommend reading section B before watching this video. So, assuming everyone has already done that, we pick back up where we left off. Section B is called Celebrating God's Glory. And the main point is this. God's about His own glory, so we need to be about His glory too. So, God created everything. We looked at it in the last video. God created everything for His glory. And... The entire universe proclaims the glory of God. Every planet, every sun, every person, every animal, every plant, all of it. And the reason that he created these things was for his own glory. It's, it's a reflection, a representation of who he is and what he cares about. So I liken this to a painter making a painting. And the difference is a, a painting is static. It's still, it just stays the way that it is. Unlike that kind of creation, God made intelligent beings, first the angels and then the humans, who are capable of being more and doing more. We have been gifted with other abilities that allow us to do more we would uniquely have the opportunity to experience God personally, right? To relate to Him, to be capable of knowing Him, to love Him, to be loved by Him, to, to share in the experience of being alive and having a will. So this, this comes with it an opportunity for either great glory or great shame, right? Because we have the, the potential to be a painting that has the ability to essentially create other paintings, right? We, we can make our own paintings, our, our own objects that are, that are expressions of who we are, right? And I don't mean literally only a painting. I mean, when we make a family, when we make relationships, friendships, uh, conversations, businesses, products, services, all these different things, you know, even just adventures and fun, all the things that we do that are an expression of who we are, of what we enjoy, of what we desire. In, in the same way, we use those things for our glory and we have the potential to use them also for God's glory. So we can relate to God and he can relate to us in some sense. And we also have the ability to use our, who we are, who God has made us and in in his painting of us, we have the ability to use that thing also to glorify God or not to, right? It's, it, it could go either way. We have the, the ability to choose. So, at the end of the day, it's a matter of what, what we put out there, what we create and what we live for, what we do, does that bring glory to God? And for more on that, uh, go back and watch uh, video A in this chapter. So the question is, if our purpose is to glorify God and that's the reason why he created us what can we do what can we produce what can we focus on that is 
going to bring God the most glory, right? How do, how do we get the most out of that? And what is the most glorious thing for us to focus on, right? Is it, a lot of times we elevate these, these lesser things as though they are the, the highest thing. For instance, uh, goodness, right? Kindness, uh, gentleness, um, kind acts for other people, uh, generosity, um, you know, a kind word or a loving act or taking care of someone or helping someone in need or creating a product or service that helps and blesses other people. All these things are good, but sometimes we can elevate them above everything else. So if I, if I were to uh, give, um, let's say worship is good, and if I were, but if I were to worship um, an item, let's say um, beauty, and, and I, I elevate beauty above everything else so that everything I focus on is about making things that are beautiful. And if I do that, I am making beauty my God, in a sense rather than the one who invented beauty, who is God, right? There's, there's nothing we can do that goes beyond the inventor, the originator of it, right? So if I, if I love beauty, there's nothing more beautiful than the one who created beauty, God. There's, if, I, if I'm after wisdom, there's no one more wise than God. If I'm after power, there's no one more powerful than God. If I'm after uh, love, there's no one more loving than God. If I'm after justice, there's no one more just than God. Right? He is, he is the author and the source of all of these things. Just as a painting can never be greater than the painter, right? the, the painting itself is, is an inspiration of the painter. It's a reflection of the painter. The painting can never be greater than the painter. It's impossible. In the same way, none of these other things are, can ever be greater than God. So when we say, what does God want us to do? What does he want us to focus on? It's not just being, good, being a good person or being kind or being loving or being any of these other things because we have the potential and often do make idols out of those things. We take otherwise good things and we idolize them to the exclusion of God and therefore we put our focus on the creation rather than the creator. So when we realize this, we, we can see the goodness in all of these other things, but we know that they're only good because the one who made them is good and he's the author and he's the one who decides what is good, right? So we, the more we realize that, then we, it steers us back towards putting our focus and our worship of God first. And then we can celebrate and enjoy and do these other things now because we will see God's reflection in them and, and value them at the same time we are glorifying God. So I can be loving towards a person and it's good in and of itself, but more than that, I am, I am doing it out of worship to God. I'm loving this other person out of worship to him. I'm, I'm, I see the value of love because it comes from him. And it's a representation of who he is. He's loving. He made us capable of love. And we can give that love to others and glorify God in the process. We are a painter who's making a painting. And our painting 
is a good representation of the painter, who is a good representation representation of a painting that God made. So I'm glorifying God. My paintings are glorifying God, and God is glorified through the whole process. In addition to that, we can also share those things with Him. We can, you know, His Spirit is in us, participating in our paintings, in our relationships, in our process, in our businesses, in our families, and all this stuff. So He is, He's moving through us and participating in it. So there's this beautiful symbiotic relationship where God is glorified and involved in the whole entire process on in a lot of different levels. So when we realize that, we will, we will see that we need to put God first. We need to be about His glory. He is the most glorious thing, right? I, I, I gave some time to that about how atheists and, and others sometimes say, well, why does God always want, you know, people to worship Him? Is He that egomaniacal that He just needs, uh, he needs us, He needs our worship? He doesn't need our worship. We exist to worship Him, right? He, he is self-sustaining and self-existent. He was glorified before we were ever made. But the objects that he has made with the ability to have rationality and intelligence to recognize this and, and a spiritual ability and aptitude to recognize this, we have to see beyond the creation and go, the creator is worthy of all praise. It is, he is, there's nothing on earth ever that we could worship that is, that is more glorious than he is. He's the author of it all. So it, it's idolatry when we worship these other things and we fully devote ourselves to him despite him, right? So, and God created a lot of these things. He created our ability to do these things. There's a way when we can still do them, most of them, for his glory. As long as we, as long as we go in thinking, how, how can I enjoy, is this from God? Is, this, is there a way to, to use this in a way that glorifies God? Is there a way to do this that most glorifies Him? And, and when we do that, we, we, we participate in this, this relationship um, where, where we're participating in His glory in, in a way. Because he, and He allows us to and He wants us to. It's, it's part of the, the reason he created us. Instead of just making glorious things, he made things with the potential to be glorious, who have the potential to make things that are glorious, that all point back to him. Beyond that, it draws us into relationship with him. If we're always seeking his glory, and we find out that He is the most glorious being, then that can open us up to realizing our dedication to Him is, is connected to the fact that He wants to utilize us, right? He wants us to live in a way that glorifies Him. He wants to be a part of that. He could have just made us without the ability to recognize this with, you know, the animals, right? And the plants, these are, they're a good example of this. They don't have the ability to choose to worship him. We do, and we do for a reason. And when we realize that, we can become part of this amazing, uh, complex web of, of sharing glory. And, uh, you know, I, I wrote in the book, I like, I like what Pastor John Piper says, he calls it Christian hedonism. And he says, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. Right? So when we realize that he is the highest and most glorious being, we, he is actually glorified in us when we recognize that. It's, it's, we are, we are beings who see him for who he is, not just what he can do, 
right? Not just his miracles and his power and this and that. And, and, and certainly not what he can do for us, right? We, we, you're on the wrong map. If you, if you come to God thinking God is good because he can do miracles and God is good because he can heal me and deliver me and, and all of these things, that's, those things are secondary. God is good because, just because, he, he is God. <laughs> He's God, right? He, we don't come to him and say God is good just because he can do miracles. Or he can, he, you know, he's, he created everything. Him choosing to do something supernatural is really not that big of a deal. It's, he created natural to us. So supernatural is, that's just a, a small part of what it means that he has not made accessible to us right now, right? We don't, we're stuck in a, in, in a reality that is right now, we call it natural, right? What is, what is natural and normal for us because we have limitations. And the reason we've been giving, given these limitations is because of sin and because of our disconnection from God. So when we realize that our, our purpose is to glorify Him and when we look for what is the thing that is the most glorious thing that we could focus on, right? What, is, what can I do that is the most good, that is the most just, that is the most wise, that's the most loving? What, what object or thing can I focus on that is the highest possible thing out of all those things? There's none other but God. He alone is the highest being, the highest source of everything. So we need to make sure that, that we always remember that and it draws us upwards and towards Him always. And we never, don't stop at the, the stuff on the surface. Keep going to the source. Keep going to the source. And God is glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him, right? And He's about His own glory because He knows better than the rest of us that He's the most glorious thing, right? He, there is nothing above Him. And we need to recognize that. And as long as we always do, it will keep us on the narrow path that leads to an intimate, eternal, glorious relationship where one day we enter into eternity with Him and He is glorified in our existence and we are glorified in that shared experience of Him. We share in His glory by participating in it through our worship. And I don't just mean singing and dancing. I mean through our admiration, our reverence, our, our respect, our, our devotion, our love, our faith. As we give ourselves to Him, He is glorified in us the most. Beyond any of this other stuff that we could do or focus on. He is the one that should be the object of all of our affections. And if we, if we love our neighbor, it's because we first love God. If we're just to our neighbor, it's because God is just. If we celebrate wisdom and we're a teacher or a, a student, you know, and, and we love learning and knowledge and discovery and adventure and all the million other things that are, that are out there that are good, we have to first see Him as the source of those things, worship Him and praise Him for those things, and then as we enjoy these other activities in a way that glorifies Him, we get the most out of those activities and we glorify Him in the process. And by doing that, we will get the most out of life. So, 
Uh, here's a quick action tip for those of you who are uh, facing a tough decision right now or will in the future. Um, here's a simple way to know which decision is the right one, the best one, right? If you have a tough time deciding being between two different options, just ask yourself a simple question. Which of the two options will bring the most glory to God? Ask yourself that question. Which will bring the most glory to God? The one that does, do that one. Simple enough. And I, and I would add as well, in addition to that, which one brings the most glory to God and is accesses and, and connects with the thing about him that is most glorious, right? If it's a matter of love or justice or patience or forgiveness or mercy or wisdom, which one of those most represents the heart of God? Once you have that answer and, and the subsequent follow-up answer, you will have profound confidence in your decision. And it's very simple. It's very simple. A lot of times things are complicated because we are not thinking, we're thinking about it from us, from our own self, from our struggle, our emotions. And if we approached it from God's perspective, it's simple. It's easy to figure out what God would want us to do in that moment. Which one glorifies Him? So meditate and pray on that. Think about it. Act upon it in your decisions today. And I will see you tomorrow. God bless. Go and have an empowered week.